Hi, Mark Donovan here from Falcon Imagery, and today I'm going to go over the topic of VOR checks. If you're planning to fly IFR uh, using VOR radio navigation, you're required to have done a um, VOR check within the preceding 30 days uh, leading up to the IFR flight. And there's several ways to do that, and I'm going to go over those ways in this video. All right, let's get into it. How to do a VOR check for IFR currency. So VOR receiver checks for IFR flight regulations um, relate to 14 CFR 91.171, where it says no person may operate a civil aircraft under IFR conditions using the VOR system of radio navigation unless the VOR equipment of that aircraft is maintained, checked, and inspected under an approved procedure or has been operationally checked within the preceding 30 days of the IFR flight and was found to be within the limits of the permissible indicated bearing error. So in that regulation, they talk about several different ways to do VOR operational checks. Uh, the first is to use a VOT signal uh, located on the ground. Um, you can secondarily use a VOR checkpoint on the ground. You can conduct an airborne VOR check. And lastly, you can conduct a dual receiver VOR check on the ground or in the air. So how do you do a VOR check using a VOT signal? Well, first you have to find a VOR test facility, uh, an approved one from the FAA. And you can go look in the chart supplement for your region of the country and look in the, uh, the chart supplement for VOR receiver checkpoints and VOR test facilities. And it's in this area where you can find the test facilities uh, that we're currently talking about. Uh, the VOT check is done on the ground before a flight. And you find a nearby VOT station in the chart supplement, as I just mentioned. And then how do you specifically use that VOT test signal? We explain here. So tune your VOR to the VOT, sig VOT signal. So set the core selector to zero degrees and the track indicator uh, should be centered on the CDI, the CDI needle basically. The to from indicator should read a from condition on the CDI. Uh, next, set the core selector with the OBS knob to 180 degrees. Um, the two from indicator should read a two zero in that case, and the track bar should be then centered. If it is, you're on track, um, you're, you've done your VO, VOT check, and you're going to basically log that notation of that VOT check in your aircraft log that resides in the plane. The second way to do a VOR check is with a VOR checkpoint uh, service. So many airports have a VOR checkpoint um, located um, on the airport in some capacity. So you want to check for um, these VOR signs on the ground. Um, and they're located typically near a run-up area or somewhere on the ramp. You can again find them on the chart supplement, um, just where you found like the um, VOT signals, you can find VOR receiver checkpoints. And you see a couple here, this is Bangor, Maine, and Portland International Jet Point both have um, VOR receiver checkpoints or VOR test facilities. Uh, just follow the instructions on the sign uh, for the VOR checkpoint. And again, the maximum permissible indicated bearing error for a VOR checkpoint is plus or minus four degrees. So the other alternative is to do an airborne VOR check. Well, how do we do this? Uh, again, while in flight, use an FAA designated airborne checkpoint if available. I show an example of one here in New York air, um, area, uh, the Kingston Airport. It says here the frequency is 117.6 on the IGN um, VOR and at an altitude of 2,500 degrees uh, with an azimuth from the facility of 070. Basically, you fly over the intersection of the, that runway and basically the needle should line up. Uh, the maximum indicated error is plus or minus six degrees. And why is it looser? While we're flying in the air. So they get a little bit more margin for error there. So if no check signal or point is available while in flight, uh, such as the one here I just gave, for example, in New York, Kingston Airport, you can go ahead and select a VOR radio that lies along the center line of an established Victor Airway, or VOR Airway. Um, select a prominent ground point along the selected radio, preferably more than 20 nautical miles from the VOR ground facility, and maneuver the aircraft directly over the point at a reasonably low altitude, and then note the VOR bearing um, indicated by the receiver when over the ground. So this example here, we have a VOR um, right here, we have a Victor Airway going out, V-35, and it's going right over the top of this airport here. So we could use that as our prominent um, ground point and do our VOR check there. 
And of course, we'll record uh, this in the air, air, airplane's uh, logbook. Again, maximum indicated bearing area is plus or minus six degrees because it's an airborne error. Uh, the last way we can do this is um, an airborne dual receiver VOR check. And many pilots that fly IFR have uh, dual VOR capability in their aircraft. So if a dual, what's the definition of a dual system? Well, it's two independent receivers, uh, but can have a common antenna. Um, to, to do this type of uh, check, you tune both nav radios to the same VOR facility. So you're going to center the needles of each VOR receiver with a two indication. Um, you're going to note the indicated bearings to the station from each receiver. And the maximum permissible variation between the two indicated bearings on those uh, two CDIs or the HSI CDI uh, can be no more than four degrees. So again, once we've done either one of those types of checks or any of those checks, we want to record our information from the VR check in uh, the aircraft logbook that should stay in the plane. So uh, what are you going to want to record? Well, the entry should include the date, the place, the bearing error, and your signature in the aircraft log or other record. And that's all there is to um, doing a VOR check for an aircraft, making sure it's compliant uh, for IFR flight. So if you have any questions or comments regarding this video, just leave them below and I'll try to answer them as time permits. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you get notified on my next video. Thank you.